Holy Spirit, come and fall upon us. Have your way in this moment. This is your service. Take full control. Move as you will. You're in charge. We acknowledge your presence and we welcome you. Would you say that with me today, church, as you lift those hands to the Spirit of God? Say, Holy Spirit, I acknowledge you. I welcome your presence. Right now, have your way. Move as you will. Here I am. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Receive His presence there where you are. Receive His presence. Washing you, sanctifying you, purifying you. Become aware of His beautiful presence upon you right now. Oh, hallelujah. Shibra Baba Torobo Shata. There where you are, would you pray in your heavenly language? Speak in your heavenly language. Worship Him in your heavenly language. The sound of heaven is here. The atmosphere of heaven is here. The kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven is here. Shira Baba Baba Torobo Shile Baba 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 I release the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ upon you. I release upon you now the power of the finished work of the cross. I release upon you now the anointing that destroys the yoke, that removes the burden off of your life now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Oh, we give you praise. There are people here this morning that have Mountains that have impossibilities, that have sickness, incurable diseases, that have things they are facing, God will deliver you. I say, God will deliver you. Can I see how many of you in the house believe that God will deliver you? Hallelujah. His beautiful presence is here. The anointing of God is here right now. The presence of the Lord is upon the people of God right now. Thank you, Lord. How many of you sense the presence of God upon you? The anointing of God upon you. The glory of God upon you right now. Thank you, Lord. We give you praise. We give you praise. Thank you. Every person now that says, I feel the anointing of God upon me. Every person that says, I need a miracle, a breakthrough. I need God to move in my life. If that's you, then you can come down to the altar right now. We're going to pray and minister. God's going to move. God's going to touch. God's going to break through. Come quickly. If you say, I sense God's presence, I sense God's anointing on me. Or you say, I need prayer, I need healing, I need a miracle, I need God to move in my house, my family. You come right now. Sing it again gently. I want to ask ushers and leaders that can assist me. Just stand behind them. Just lift your hands where you are to God. Church, would you stretch your hands towards 
the people of God. Those of you online, you can be a part of this right now. Just stretch your hands with us towards them. The presence of God, the presence of God. The presence of God comes upon you right now. From the top of your head to the soles of your feet flows the anointing right now. I want to hear the church praying for the people. Let's raise our voices. Stretch your hands over them, leadership, and don't touch them. Just release the power and the presence of God. We come into an agreement now as a church that every need is met in this altar right now. We come into an agreement that every yoke is destroyed. Every burden is removed now because of the anointing. In the name of Jesus, we command every sickness, every infirmity, every pain, come out of these bodies. Be healed. We loose you from that infirmity. We loose you from that weakness. We break every oppression and torment over your life. And right now, we loose upon you the mighty power of the anointing. In the name of Jesus, let the presence of God wash over them. Let the anointing of God move upon them. Right now, right now, right now. There it is. Begin to receive it. Begin to receive it. That's right. Let's lift our voices and pray. We come into an agreement now. In the name of Jesus, deliverance for your life, healing for your body, salvation for your family, provision for your need, peace. Rabba Sataraba Kataraba Rabo Shataraba Kotaraba Rabo Shataraba Kurabakata Itaraba Kotarabaka Filled 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 with the presence of God Filled with the glory of God Filled with the power of God Receive it, receive it That's right, release the anointing Release the anointing Release the anointing Release it Right now, in the name of Jesus. Rabba Shatanaba Kutanabaka. Riba Rababa Sotanaba Rabaka. Oh, Riba Rabba Shatanaba Kutanaba. Yes. It's your portion. It's your portion. Let that spine be healed. Let that back problem be healed. Let that bone, that vertebrae be healed. Let that marriage be restored. Let that door be opened. Let favor come upon you. Let there be a new beginning for you. Let there be restoration for you. Be restored. Woo! Rebarababo shatalabaraba satalaba Ribarababa shatalabaraba bos Rebarababo shatai There it is I feel the power of God uh, You feel the power of God You feel the anointing of God Take it In the name of Jesus Everybody church let's lift our hands one more time high above our heads Sing it one more time Come on worship God is here. You always fill my heart. The glory comes Play upon me. Life, 
your home. Take things to come back to life. Just worship Him. Have an encounter with His presence and be transformed. I bless each and every one of you that came to this altar now. We, the body of Christ, we bless you. As an apostle of the Lord, I bless you. I bless you. I put this blessing upon you now. Hallelujah. I want to ask the entire congregation right now to let us all give the Lord praise and thanks for all that He's done for us in this moment. Let's give Him high praise. Oh, can we give Him big praise? Hallelujah. 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 Oh, hallelujah. Rejoice. 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 Rejoice today. Rejoice and be glad. For the Lord reigns. Hallelujah. Praise God. You may be seated in the presence of God. Do you know, church, that beautiful worship. Thank you, worship team. Thank you, singers. God bless you. And keep playing there, Dylan. Thank you. I want to uh, just say it was wonderful to worship with God's people today. How many of you know He comes when we worship Him? And so this morning... As you were worshiping, His glorious presence just came in such a beautiful way. He is our deliverer. He is our strength. He is our refuge. And the glory of His presence makes everything brand new in our lives. So good to be with you. We love each and every one of you. Always praying for you. You're in our hearts. You're in our prayers. Always. And we bless you. Won't you just maybe look at somebody around you and just say, I'm glad you're here this morning. You look great. You look awesome. Give them some sort of compliment if you don't mind. Because the sound of heaven or the kingdom of heaven is a place of rejoicing. It's a place of excitement. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Do we have all our air conditionings on? You might have to add one, one fan, two fans if you want to. Just check the temperature and it's all good. Thank you. I'll leave it in your hands. Bless you. We want to welcome every person here this morning. Those visiting us for the very first time, would you raise your hand? We want to welcome you. And it, God bless you. Good to have you with us this morning. So many of you here. God bless you. For the first time, we bless you. We bless you. Let's give them a good hand. I see more hands there. Bless you. So wonderful to see you. God bless you. Wonderful. A brochure has been given to you inside that brochure. Please open it now. Inside the brochure is a, a, just an information slip. We want to ask for your details. We want to stay in touch with you. We want to notify you when we have uh, special events and meetings. So please fill it in. And um, when we receive the offering this morning, just come and bring it to the altar uh, the slip that you're filling in and give it back to us. And that's our way of staying in touch with you. Thank you so much. God bless you. This is the time to worship God with our giving. The best time is in the glory, in the presence of God. Isaiah chapter 55 and verse 8. Isaiah chapter 55 and verse 8. 
God says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. How many of you know we must seek the ways of God? His ways, His thoughts are higher than our ways and thoughts. So many people think that they know the best way. But God's ways are higher. As high as the heavens are above the earth, His ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. We live in a society where people have so many opinions, so many ideas, ways, and thoughts of how to make it, how to succeed, how to be prosperous. But God's ways are the best ways. And it's higher than our ways. Jesus, the Messiah, said, Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all the things that you have need of shall be added to you. He did not say it might be. He said it shall be. He didn't say it could be. The Messiah said it shall be. Added unto you if you seek God's ways, God's kingdom first. We do the seeking, God does the rewarding. He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. No seeking, no rewarding. No seeking, no rewarding. Seeking God diligently, He rewards you. Seeking the kingdom of God first, He adds to your life. It doesn't just happen. So we must seek God's ways. Our part is to do the seeking, He does the adding. Don't worry about the adding. It's not your responsibility. That is the realm of God. The realm of the impossible. Our part is just to seek Him. Seek Him every day. Seek Him in our moments. Seek Him. Put aside the first day of your week as you are doing today for Him. Put aside the first part of your day, your morning, Seek His Word. Seek His face. Seek Him in worship. Put His kingdom first in your finances. Where your treasure is, there's your heart. The heart always follows where the treasure goes. So we seek God's ways because it is better and higher than our ways. And His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. But how many of you know He has made known His thoughts? He has made known His ways in His Word. And Jeremiah 29 verse 11 tells us what his thoughts are. My thoughts towards you, says the Lord, are thoughts to, and and I'm thinking of your prosperity. Put it on there for me, please. Put it on the screen for me. For I know the thoughts that I have towards you, says the Lord of hosts. It is thoughts of prosperity to give you a prosperity, an expected end, and a hopeful future. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. Let me go there in my Bible. I want to read it. Jeremiah 29, verse 11. For I know the thoughts. Remember he said, my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil. To give you a future and a hope. Hallelujah. Somebody say, God thinks of a future for my life. He's not thinking of your destruction, your demise, your end, but of your future 
and to give you an expected end. Let's give him a praise offering for that. Hallelujah. Amen. And, and let me just say this. God's ways always work. God's ways. Would you say that out loud with me? Say, God's ways always work. Amen. Thank you, Dee. God's ways always work. The 10th verse of Isaiah 55 tells us, For as the rain comes down, snow from heaven, and do not return there, but water the earth, and make it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. Hallelujah. So God's ways always work. His word always works. I remember I bought a trampoline for my boys, got it out the box, tried to set it up and assemble it. Eventually, it took me hours. And eventually, I had to go ask the neighbor, does he have a hammer for me? Because I had to hammer the thing loose again and break it down again because it was such a mess. And I decided, now I'm going to take the manual. Let me check the manual, read the manual. And when I read the manual, it took me a few minutes to assemble that trampoline. So how many of you knows the manufacturer of that trampoline knew better? His ways were better than my ways. So how many of you know God's manual, God's ways are better than our ways? What will take us a lifetime to figure out and do, we can accomplish it quickly if we obey the Word of God. Amen. Would you say amen? Amen. Hallelujah. So this morning... When we present, I said all of that to say this to you, that the tithe, the first fruit to God, the tithe, the first fruit of our income to God, it's His ways. It's His thoughts. Not mine. No man. No pastor. No preacher. It's His ways. It's His thoughts. And if we do it, it's going to work. And when we, He says, when you give and when you sow, I'm going to manifest my word in your life. Amen. The ways of God, the thoughts of God are the best. Hallelujah. I want to give you an opportunity this morning to give to God, to present to God your first fruits, your tithes, your offerings. It brings the blessing, the protection, the power of God into our lives and our finances. So if you would get ready now with your offering, with your seed, and we're going to pray. If you need a tithing envelope, please slip up your hand, and Usher will bring it to you. And also, if you would like to use the welcome desk, well, the speed point at the welcome desk, you can do so. If you want to use your card, you're more than welcome to do so. Can I have the bank details on the screen? Keep it there for the people, please. Everybody online, you can also be a part of this moment and give and sow and invest into the kingdom of God today. And the Lord is going to bless you abundantly in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Praise God. Now, I want to pray for you. And, uh, and as uh, people come and bring their offerings, their tithes, their first fruits, sowing and giving into God's kingdom, uh, I will be praying over you and speaking the blessing over you. I want to ask this morning if the side sections, everybody in the side sections, if you would come first. Whenever you're ready, you can come right now to the altar and bring your tithes and offerings. And after the side sections have come, we will do the middle sections. Heavenly Father, I just speak your favor, your blessing now over the church. And I thank you as people are giving and contributing now that the presence of God is upon them. The anointing of God is upon them. The favor of God is upon them. In Jesus' mighty name. We give you praise for that. We give you honor. We give you glory. I pray that the seed they sow will increase and multiply. That there will be a great harvest that favor will be their portion. I pray that the blessing will be commanded over them and overtake them in Jesus Christ's mighty name. And the church agree and say amen. Can I have the musicians, please? Just the musicians for a moment. 
Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And just play it for me on the instrument still, and please cover the earth with your glory. Thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Just play it again on the instruments. Go for it, guys. Let's release the sound of rejoicing. Hallelujah. As we play and sing, as we play the music, you come rejoicing and give to God and honor Him with your giving today. Well, the, I guess the musicians, you might as well join me because I sense the rejoicing here right now. Once you've given, come on, clap your hands, rejoice a little bit. The spirit of rejoicing, of praise is here right now. Thank you for your ministry this morning. It was Pastor Mark's birthday this week, and just want to say, bless you, Pastor Mark. And we love and appreciate you, and may the Lord bless you, and His favor be upon you. Hallelujah. We're so blessed to have the best of the best here in this church. I believe we have the best uh, leadership, staff, Leaders, helpers, volunteers, media, singers, and the best congregation members. <laughs> Hallelujah. The best of the best. Come on, give God a praise if you didn't believe that. Hallelujah. Also good to see you, Shireen. God bless you. Wonderful to have you. Colleen's daughter is here with us today. Welcome. 
blessings to you as well. Genesis chapter 50 and verse 24, I want to just speak a few minutes to you on when God visits you. Genesis 50 and verse 24. And Joseph said to his brethren, I am dying, but God will surely visit you and bring you out of this land to the land of which he swore, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. I believe that when God wants to visit you, I believe that when God visits you, that you will be changed. Your dilemma will be changed. Your situation will be changed. How many of you want God to visit you? To visit your house, your family? I want God to visit this church. I want God to visit this city, that there will be a divine visitation. Because Joseph said to his brothers, I won't be here, but God will visit you. And when he does, he's going to bring you out of this place into your land. They must have thought, why? Would God bring us out of here? I mean, we just got here. We are fed here. We are provided for. We're living well here in Egypt. But Joseph saw that it was not God's intention for them to live as foreigners in Egypt. But God's will was for them to be landowners, to be possessors of land, of territory, and to be a nation. Come on, somebody. I prophesy to you today, God is about to visit you. He's about to visit your house. He has not intended for you just to live there where you are right now and settle there. He's bringing you into the land. Just pads. Joseph spoke prophetically, and he was talking about what something that was going to do. So, God had their own land in mind for them. And this is my first point that I want to make here. And you could write it down if you want to. God's dream for you is always bigger and better than your own dream for yourself. Somebody say amen to that. I think we need to say that to somebody around us. Tell them God's dream for you is always bigger and better than your dream for yourself. Woo! Whatever your dream is, it's bigger than that. It's better than that. Hallelujah. Maybe you see you dream to be uh, the manager of that company. God sees you owning the company. Maybe you see yourself married one day with one child. God sees you with five kids. Maybe you say, if only I can have an apartment before I die. God sees you owning your own house. His dream is bigger. Amen. He wants you to see beyond what you see now. We have to believe that. Oh my God. Some of us, our dream is just to live until we, Lord, if I can just live to a certain age. God's dream is bigger and better than that. If I could just have a job, Lord. If I could just get through the month, Lord. No, God's dream is bigger and better. And and Revival Worship Center, life group leaders, everybody in the house, God's dream is bigger and better for us than our own dream. His vision is beyond what we imagine. Hallelujah. I feel like Joseph today telling you God's going to visit you. And He's going to bring you into something bigger and better. Hallelujah. So, when God visited them, their situation changed. Let me just say this. They were happy here when Joseph spoke to them, but then a king arose that didn't know Joseph, didn't know God, and he enslaved them. They became slaves in Egypt. And the Bible says in Exodus 2.23, When they were enslaved, and by the way, they were slaves for 430 years. 
The Bible says in Exodus 2 and 23, what happened is, is that in the, it happened in the process of time that the king of Egypt died, and then the children of Israel groaned because of the bondage, and they cried out, and their cry came up to God because of the bondage. So what happens is, is they became desperate for God to visit them. And then God responds to them and says, I'm here to deliver you. So the first thing that happens when we have a visitation or when God sets us up for a visitation is we have a strong desire. We have a strong desire for God and the power of God to have a visitation with God. How many of you know sometimes your situation can create a desperation in you? If it wasn't for the situation that you've been in, maybe you would, have, would not have ever been that desperate. So a situation can cause a desperation. But the situation causing that desperation is setting you up for a visitation. Is there anybody that has been desperate? Has anybody been desperate the last two years? Some of you have been very desperate. When you found yourself in that desperate situation, you started crying out to God. Hallelujah. So a situation can create a desperate cry in our hearts for change. Maybe you're desperate to see a change. Maybe you've come to a point in your family, your relationships, or marriage where you say, I don't want this anymore. I need a change. And what happens is, is there's a cry, a strong desire that comes from that position to God. And change manifests as a result of a visitation from God. So a deep desire and longing for God's presence and a change in our situation means that God is at the door. If you have a strong desire for change... If you have a desperate cry for God, it's a sign to you there's a change. There's a visitation. If there's no strong desire, no urgency, if we are happy and complacent, there's no visitation. A visitation comes when we get desperate, when we cry out for a change. How many of you know we need a change? And Joseph said, when God visits you, He will bring you out of here. There'll be a change. He'll bring you into his land. So get ready because God's bringing you out. Hallelujah. So the first thing that happens when we have a visitation with God is there's going to be a strong desire. A strong desire for God. A strong desire for holiness. A strong desire for God's word. A strong desire to be in church. A strong de- desire for the presence of God. I have a strong desire in me for revival. For a move of God. For the glory of God to manifest. That is a sign to me that God is at the door. Come on somebody. There's something about to happen. Hallelujah. Now secondly... When you have a strong desire, the second thing that will happen to you just before a visitation from God is a strong urgency or sense or spirit of prayer comes upon you. Before a visitation, there's a strong spirit of prayer that comes upon you because the Bible says Israel cried out to God. They started to pray earnestly and God heard them. Your situation will not change without prayer. Prayer births miracles. Prayer births new beginnings. Without prayer, nothing happens. Not only prayer, but prayer with desire. Prayer with desire because Jesus said, When you pray, whatsoever things you desire, if you believe it, you shall have it. People pray without desire. And their prayers don't have power. But when you pray for something or someone, you must have a desire for it. You must desire to see it. You must have a passion for it. 
Because that kind of prayer releases power. I like this section because you're responding. Come on, I need everybody to respond here today. Prayer creates an exit from your current situation. Prayer creates an exit from bondage. When Israel started praying, God started preparing their exodus. When Israel started crying out to God, God was already preparing Moses and the ten plagues and the signs and wonders to bring them out. And I'm here to tell you, when you pray with desire, God's preparing your exit. Won't you raise your hand and say, my exodus, my exit has been prepared. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hannah was miserable. Her competitor teased her, reminded her every time they came to God's house that she was a failure. She was a loser. She couldn't have any children. Hannah went to church miserable and left church miserable. But one day she said, I can't take this anymore. She started having a strong desire to have her own son. She went back by herself to the tabernacle and she had a strong spirit of prayer come upon her to such a degree that she was in travail and groaning. Only her lips were moving, but you couldn't make out what she was saying. Even Eli the priest thought she's drunk. And he said, you need to put the wine away from you. And she said, no, man of God, I'm not drunk. But I am groaning. I'm weighed down. I have such a burden. Oh, come on, somebody. She said, something is going on with me. She was at the door for her miracle, her breakthrough. She was giving birth to something in the Spirit. And the man of God said, what you have desired, the God of Israel will give it to you. Oh my God. And she went back to her husband and the Bible says that she had a different countenance. She looked different. She walked different because she had already received it. She knew she was coming out of that miserable situation because God had given her a word. Hallelujah. And a couple of months later, she had Samuel. And she said, she named him Samuel and she said, I prayed him from God. I called him out from God. And I'm here to prophesy to everybody in this house today that when you have a strong urgency and sense of prayer upon you, you're about to give birth to something new. And you're going to come out of that miserable condition. Somebody say, I'm not going to be miserable anymore. I'm not going to be defeated anymore. I'm not going to be oppressed anymore. I'm going to walk like I've got it. I'm going to praise Him like I've got it. I'm going to rejoice like i got it. Is there any Hannah here today that says, I'm not going to let the enemy silence me. I have a relationship with God. God has given me a promise. I'm coming out of this miserable situation. I want to give you about 30 seconds to praise Him. Come on. Somebody jump, shout, clap those hands loose the power of God right now woo, into your situation. Hallelujah. Revelation will change your situation. When she had a revelation, what the man of God spoke over her, it changed her situation. Today, your situation is changing. God will visit you. He will visit your children. He will visit your house. He will visit us. Hallelujah. Ecclesiastes 11.3 
Ecclesiastes 11 and verse 3 says, If the clouds are full of rain, they empty themselves upon the earth. And if a tree falls to the south or the north, in the place where the tree falls, there it shall lie. In other words, if the clouds are full, there's an outpouring. If you pray, some of you have been praying, you've been crying out to God. And like Hannah, she came to a point where the cloud was full. Israel came to a place where the clouds were full. Where God sent Moses to them. And I'm here to tell you, when you pray, don't ever give up. Don't ever quit. Don't ever stop. Even if there's no results. Because you're filling the clouds with rain. And whatever you put into the cloud, you can get from it. If you don't put anything into it, you can't get anything. But if you put something in the cloud, oh come on, if you put something in the cloud, there will be a downpour. There will be a visitation. There will be an outpouring of favor, of blessing, of abundance, of anointing, of power. Oh, hallelujah. Woo! I see a cloud in this place. There's a cloud on some of you. There's a cloud over your house. There's a cloud here because some of you have put something into the cloud. Some of you have prayed. Some of you said amen. Some of you were praising God. If anybody does absolutely nothing, they can get nothing. The, actually, the word means nothing for them. The church means nothing. But when you say, when you come and you praise God, you put something into the cloud. When you lift your hands and you worship, you're putting something in the cloud. When you say, Amen, preacher, you're putting something in the cloud. When you clap your hands, when you do something, you're putting something in the cloud. And in the cloud, there will be an outpouring and an outbreak. You might as well get healed on your way home. You might as well get, come on, somebody, pregnant with a dream and a vision activated in the anointing power of God. Woo! I got to bring this to a, a close. But the Bible says, Genesis 32 to 24, Jacob was left alone when God visited him. And he wrestled with the angel. I'm here to tell you, in order for you to have a visitation, sometimes you've got to be left alone. <laughs> sometimes some friends have to walk out on you. Sometimes some people have to leave. Sometimes... The things you depended on has to be taken away. Sometimes your own ability and strength has to be removed so that God can visit you and show you, I am your power. I am your strength. I'm your shield. I'm your provider. Everybody stand. You've been left alone. But God says, I will never leave you. I have positioned you to visit you. Would you stand to your feet? Would you stand to your feet? Come on, somebody. A visitation will turn barrenness into fruitfulness. Would you lift those hands and say, A visitation will turn barrenness into fruitfulness. Say, I'm fruitful. My life is fruitful. My destiny is fruitful. My vision is fruitful. My purpose is fruitful. Say, my might. Oh, come on, somebody. Lift those hands. I release the anointing now to turn your barrenness into fruitfulness. I need about 50 people in the house of God to pray out loud and strong in other tongues right now. Go ahead. One, two, three, go. Like Hannah, cry out. Like Hannah, cry out for a visitation. Cry out. God is about to release a Samuel. God is about to release answered prayer. Let there be an outpouring in this house. Let there be a revival in this house. Let there be an awakening in this house. Let there be. Let there be a downpour. Would you lift your hands? Come on, your voice. Cry out for God to visit us. Woo!
Hallelujah. Father, we give you praise for our visitation. Let us not be the city that didn't know that it was the hour of visitation. But let us be the people that are desperate for a visitation. And we say amen to this word. We say thank you for this word. Your word is alive on the inside of us. You will confirm it with signs, wonders, and miracles. Hey, based on that, Lord, we are excited for this week for what is about to manifest in Jesus' name. Come and give Him praise this morning. Hallelujah! Praise God. Praise God. Before I dismiss you, won't you do me a favor right now? Everybody get out your cell phones. I know this is like from a glory moment to a earthly moment but everyone get out your cell phones you may do it put on the selfie camera take a selfie and say the Lord visited me hallelujah come on do it do it and then post it on your Facebook on your Instagram on your on your WhatsApp status and tell the people don't miss what God is doing in the house of the Lord amen Tell them that you were in the house of the Lord today. I encourage them to join us tonight at 6 p.m. Hallelujah. Make sure that you hashtag RWC there so we can see all your beautiful faces. Amen. All your wonderful faces. I see some of you are ducking and weaving from all the selfie pictures. You might as well just own it. Just do a... Amen. Praise God. Thank you so much for doing it. God bless you for that. Before you go, I'm very excited because Tuesday night we're going to be having our marriage night. All the married couples should go, Amen. And I want to encourage you right now to invest into your marriage. Invest into your marriage by coming on Tuesday night at 7 p.m. Invite friends, invite families to come that need to hear about godly principles of marriage there's going to be great things released. There's going to be some prizes given, photo booths, time of fellowship. We're going to have a great time. That's our marriage night. Man says, or he says, she says, God says. Marriage night on Tuesday, the 2nd of November. Then we're going to be having this coming Sunday, the 7th of November. It's our communion Sunday. Don't miss out. Come and partake of the Holy Communion with us in all our both morning services. Make sure to be here. Come and sit around the table of the Lord. And then as well, our, um, our social team is going to be having a hike slash walk on the 6th of November. It's the Saturday. For any information, please contact the office. We'll help you with that and get you into contact with that. And then as well, uh, anyone that is a member of our church that wants to dedicate their children to the Lord from newborn to three years old, we'll be doing that in our second morning service on the 7th of November. And then if you want to become a part of this great church, part of this vision, part of this mission, come and slot in with us and help us expand the kingdom of God. Join us on the 8th to the 9th of November at 7 p.m. Please register for that. That's our Walk in His Footsteps seminar. Register for that. And there is a fee of 30 Rand for your manual online. You're able to email us at admin at rwc.org.za. You can be part of that as well. And then if you are a member of this church or if not, and you want to encounter God and you want God to help you and deliver you from past hurts, generational curses, and you want to be set up to walk in the favor and the blessing of the Lord, 
join us on our encounter seminar which will be starting on the 15th up until the 17th of november at 7 p.m as well once again register for that as well and i welcome this there online just drop us an email we love you god bless you tonight don't miss out you can feel there's something happening how many of you can feel god is at the door about to visit us so don't miss out tonight once again our mitchell's playing Life Group is going to be serving us hot chocolate afterwards. So there'll be fellowship time as well. We love you. God bless you. Go in the power and the love of Jesus Christ.